Hi, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to SA Accounting Academy. Uh, here's a short clip on one of our previous webinars. I hope that you really do enjoy it. Good morning, my name is Tian Herschelman. I am the Head of Advice at Old Mutual Wealth. And today it is my privilege to talk about retirement planning with you and all of the elements that make up a retirement plan. Now the concept of retirement has changed over time. Previously, if we look back from the early centuries and in the dark ages, somebody went on retirement when he could no longer contribute to the tribe and they would let him be. But as a society, we've evolved and we've started putting measures into place to take care of our elderly people and take care of people that have contributed to society for most of their life. And today I'm going to unpack all of the different elements that make up a retirement plan by looking at a couple of scenarios and sharing all of those insights with you. So today I'm going to be talking about retirement planning and considering all of the different elements that make up a retirement plan. But first, we have to take stock of the last 12 months and what a 12 months it's been. Even if you go further back to 18 or 24 months, there's been a lot of events that shifted our expectation to what we expect in society and markets and even possibly retirement planning and our outlook on our investments. So if we look back briefly, we saw COVID-19 hit its third wave in South Africa. We've seen the numbers slightly dwindle in the last couple of months. Uh, president Joe Biden was elected. Uh, Donald Trump did not make his second term as the president. The RAND surprisingly came back against the dollar. And we saw Prince Harry and Meghan Markle quit the royal family, even being interviewed by Oprah. We saw the Black Lives Matter protesters gaining a lot of traction, especially after the unfortunate death of George Floyd. We then saw businesses being looting as a result of our ex-president handing himself over for incarceration. And more recently, we saw the Israel-Gaza conflict um, build up again, which has been going for centuries now, it feels like. And then more recently, we saw the Taliban take control of Afghanistan the moment that the US forces left Afghanistan. And all of this left investors feeling fearful, uncertain, and anxious. And we can expect this during times which are unprecedented for us. It's the first pandemic we've ever gone through. And seeing all these conflicts go up overseas, locally, and abroad. Now, if we relay this back to retirement planning, the picture doesn't look great. We might be world champions at rugby, but we are not champions of retirement planning. A study done across people in South Africa earning more than 8,000 Rand a month and above showed that 46 to 49 percent of individuals have no retirement plan whatsoever. 45 percent of individuals believe that they only need 25 years to save for retirement. And a shocking 60% of people when moving employers cash in their retirement savings when they move employers. And we've also seen certain um, proposals or some uh, potential proposals made by Treasury to also potentially alleviate the certain um, the limits upon withdrawing from retirement funds before retirement. Interesting space to see how that will play out in the next couple of years as well. But what actually happened in investment markets? During all of this period of feeling uncertain, feeling anxious, what actually played out in investment markets? And how did that correlate with human behavior? And what did we see investors do? Well, if you went into gold, the age-old investment for consistency, you would have lost 23% over the last 12 months. And when I say lost, not lose, but you would have seen a decrease in value of 23%. If you'd gone into Bitcoin, you would have made 2.4 times the capital invested. Although keep in mind, from roughly April, May, you would have seen a 50% decline and recently another resurgence in Bitcoin. Also, keep in mind, there was three years from about 2018 to early 2021 where there was no growth in Bitcoin. In the All Share Index, up 20% the last year. However, if you look at the All Share Index's return from the bottom of the market when the pandemic hit. So if you had the courage to invest, to buy when it was cheap, you would have had an 83% return. In simple terms, if you invested 1 million Rand, you would have had 1.8 million Rand 12 months or 
at the bottom of the pandemic up until now, your million rand would have grown to 1.8 million rand. The S&P 500 in dollar terms returned 39%. That's in hard currency in US dollars. The MSCI World Index returned 31% in US dollars. And then the South African rand compared to the dollar actually strengthened by 15%. And we saw a little bit of weakening in the last couple of months. Now, needless to say, it's actually been a good time for markets. If you look at balance fund returns over the last one year, we saw a 10 to 22% return. Keep in mind the all share index return as well. And having seen this 83% return in the all share index, it's been a great time for investors. However, we see we saw the opposite happening. And we would have thought that looking at history, we would have known that when there's a pandemic or a market crash or market volatility, upward and downwards movements and investments, generally we tend to see a big upswing in 12 to 36 months. If you look back, and this is a uh, the All Share Index uh, displayed on one graph showing all of the crises that we faced in the last 50 years or so. We saw the Black Monday crisis, the Asian crisis, the tech bubble burst, the financial crisis, and more recently, the coronavirus crisis. And if we look at it a little bit closer, you'll see that every time there was a big market crash or volatility, if you look at it that way, if you look at the 75 uh, to 77 dip, it took us 61 months to recover from that during the time when the Soveto riots took place. Uh, roughly in the time between uh, P.B. Bruta's Rubicon speech, we took 25 months to, um, to recover from a decline in gold prices. We took 23 months to uh, recover in the 80s, uh, early 90s. We saw 18-month recovery um, at just before the, the turn of the 2000s. We saw a 27-month recovery in early 2000s during the tech stock bubble burst. And then during the U.S. American housing crisis, we saw a 30-month recovery period However, at the end of that, investors who remained invested, who invested just before the crisis, would have had a 120% return. So if one thing we can take out of history, or we've been taught by history, is that when there is volatility in our markets, we tend to recover between 12 to 36, and in some cases, 60 months. But markets tend to always come back. However, what we saw, we saw investors let their emotions ruin their investment decision-making, especially over the last 18 months. So an article by Fin24 showed how clients of momentum wealth actually lost a hundred million rand because they switched from more aggressive equity bearing investments to more conservative cash based investments. They switched 15 billion rand during a period where the market returned 54%. And the reason for this investment decision making, which is purely driven by emotions, is due to the fact that most people don't have a plan. It's like boarding an airplane and your pilot is only navigating based on what he sees before him. If he has a clear sky with, with an open view, his decision making will be completely different to when it's cloudy, when the weather isn't looking too good. And that's why a pilot in the cockpit of an airplane or an aircraft has various plans that he's implementing based on the data he's receiving. He doesn't just let it go over to his emotions and what he can see in front of him, but he makes decisions based on good information. And the same is true of our retirement plan. If we base our decision making for our investments or for solid retirement plan, we tend to make less emotional decisions and less irrational decisions with regards to our investments. So what are the elements of a retirement plan that I can control? Because clearly, and one can always debate this, but it's very difficult to control markets. None of us could have foreseen the COVID-19 pandemic taking place. However, it did have an impact on markets. And for those of us that learned from history, there was some money to be made. Now, I want to talk about retirement in a different light. The concept of retirement has actually changed significantly over the years. And retirement almost has three levels to it. The first one is financial security. That's the point where your passive income or your assets can cover your basic living expenses. And that's the post at which, or the point to which most people actually strive for in their retirement plan. The second step in your, in your overall retirement planning is financial independence. That's the point where your passive income actually covers your existing lifestyle. So between you being in an environment where you are working, where you are earning an income, whether it be from your business or from your salary as an employee, that passive income that you earn from your assets can actually give you the same lifestyle that you are sustaining today. And then we get to financial freedom, which is where your passive income 
covers your ideal lifestyle. And this is such a great place to be, where you can decide where you want to live. What does retirement look like? Do you see yourself being at the coast, being inland with the kids? Do you see yourself traveling? Do you see yourself still working, maybe starting a nonprofit organization? I hope that you enjoyed that video. For more of our webinar videos, go to www.accountingacademy.co.za. Thank you and have a lovely day.